It is Barberheimer time and I know that at least a section of those interested in science might also be interested in watching the Oppenheimer movie. I would also like to watch both of them. On the one hand, there is a modern retelling of a hypersexualized doll and on the other hand, a whitewashed retelling of hyperglorified scientists. While I don't really know much about the Barbie movie's narrative, I do know a bit about the Manhattan Project and a lot has been written and researched about it. Because this is a science show, we're going to be talking about Oppenheimer. Rather, we're going to be talking about the Manhattan Projects and the effects it had on it, both on people and on science. The Manhattan Project was a super secret American research and development project during the World War II. It led to the development and the detonation of the first ever nuclear weapons in the world. At one point, J. Robert Oppenheimer was the director of the Los Alamos lab, which designed these bombs. This whole project began in 1939, just a year after German scientists had discovered nuclear fission because there were fears that Nazi Germany would develop an atomic bomb first. This Manhattan Project was a collaboration between the US, UK and Canada. It was disbanded on the day of the Indian independence, 15th of August 1947. The Trinity test saw the detonation of the first ever nuclear weapon on Earth. It was an atomic bomb test conducted on July 16th of 1945 at 5.30 a.m. And it was the first ever instance of the iconic mushroom cloud as well. This explosion was highly secret and in the entire Manhattan Project, less than 20 people knew what it was about. In fact, among the over 100,000 people who worked on the Manhattan Project itself, only a handful knew the true nature of the project and the weapons that they were developing and what they were intended to be used for. I'm sure it's mentioned in the movie as well, but after the Trinity test, Oppenheimer famously quoted from the Bhagavad Gita saying, Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. This quote is a very American mistranslation. The actual phrase from chapter 11 verse 32 in Gita talks about time, meaning literally, I am time. The verse translates to I am time, the source of death and destroyer of worlds. And Krishna is telling Arjuna in this, whether you participate in this war or not, as time, I will eventually take the lives of warriors. For some reason, either Oppenheimer or his biographers translated this to I am become death destroyer of worlds, which in the case of atomic bombs, I suppose is fairly accurate. A couple of interesting scientific things happened at this point. Many of us, especially quizzers, might know the famous story of how Kodak discovered the tests, nuclear tests sitting hundreds of kilometers away in their facilities. The company's X-ray film rolls suddenly started to develop fog or spots for many weeks. This was already known to happen during exposure to radiation. So during the war, Kodak had specifically taken precautions to avoid radiation contamination. But the company was still getting complaints of fogging in 1945 and they managed to trace it to packaging material that came in contact with water which contained radiation waste from the Trinity test. So Kodak was the first group of people outside of the Manhattan Project to know that a nuclear bomb had gone off somewhere. And a month after the Trinity test, the US dropped two atomic bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, killing over 250,000 Japanese citizens and over 50,000 Koreans who at the time were in Japanese prisons. The staggering number is really hard to comprehend. But that is not where the story ends and in fact that is not all of the story. Now we come to the movie. Nolan has been known to let's say whitewash stories. For example in his Dunkirk there is no mention of the Royal Indian Army Service Corps which had, which had sent several contingents to fight. The movie makes no mention of South Asian and East African crew who had participated in really large numbers to delay the onset of German attack. In fact, the Indian Army played quite a pivotal role in how Dunkirk 
transpired and what happened in its aftermath. Even in the Dark Knight trilogy, there are multiple characters such as Bane, Catwoman and Ra's al Ghul who were all cast white, whereas in the comics they are not. In Oppenheimer 2, the tests are depicted from a white American context. They are depicted as if they are being conducted in a really remote deserted area in Los Alamos in New Mexico. But the reality was actually far from that. This part of the country was occupied by Native American and Hispanic people. While Los Alamos in New Mexico had always been a site that was occupied, going back to 10,000 years, it had also always been contentious. Local native communities suffered droughts and raids and it was briefly abandoned, but by the late 1500s, Spanish troops started to arrive from Mexico and they started to establish their political ground there. For at least 200 years from then, the area was still relatively isolated and barren, but when trains started making an appearance and becoming more common, more and more people started to come here, especially for what they called fresh air away from polluting cities. This is when Hispanic people started occupying the region more and more. There were also students and teachers and small rural schools and ranch schools and the community in Los Alamos was seeing what were some of the early forms of tourism as well as education specifically for boys in the early 20th century. When the Manhattan Project crew came along in 1943, the residents were given a mere 24 hours to evacuate. Oppenheimer had picked the site because he thought its natural beauty and its hilly views will motivate scientists to stay there and work on the atomic bomb. The US Army wrote to the landowners there saying that the government was taking possession of the land for military purposes and the US government seized indigenous land and destroyed farmlands that had stayed with families for several generations. All the livestock were mass culled, they were shot and bulldozed. Many people had nowhere to go, on foot, and many of the men ended up being hired by Oppenheimer to work on the Manhattan Project without knowing what they were doing. These Hispanic and Native American men were asked to work specifically with beryllium by Oppenheimer and they were not given protective gear. Whereas, of course, all the scientists and their aides and assistants were. All the Hispanic men ended up dying of beryliosis. The future generations of these families that were nearby have battled rare forms of cancer since then, going on even today. After the Trinity test, where the first bomb was detonated, the people living in surrounding areas were not told that it was a nuclear or atomic bomb. Many residents went to picnic in the area apparently and many kids picked up whatever was left off of the bomb on the ground, including trinitites. These are trinity rocks, tiny bits of green colored glass that were radioactive. These pieces were used to make dresses for young girls and babies for religious functions as well. And it was only when the bombs were dropped on Japan that these people found out that the test that they had been exposed to was radioactive in nature. Today, many older adults and middle-aged folks in the region are having to constantly undergo medical procedures, chemotherapy, reconstructive surgeries and more procedures for the kinds of cancers they end up with. According to reports, there was no financial or any other form of compensation to these people that suffered the brunt of the quote-unquote cutting-edge science. And what's more, no one from the movie has been in touch with them either or acknowledged them, according to reports. 1957 onwards, the US government then started selling bits of land in Los Alamos to private individuals. At the end of the day though, there was and still is a big question here when it came to the bombs. Did Americans really have to develop the bomb and drop two of them on Japan? At the time, the Americans, British and Canadians knew that Germany was not anywhere close to developing a nuclear bomb because they had intelligence. 
and intercepted Japanese communication had clearly shown that the Japanese were preparing to surrender. Additionally, the US government intended to keep all testing and health effects from atomic testing secret until Kodak, the company threatened to sue them in 1951 unless they revealed the location and times of their tests, which they did to Kodak. The American people did not know. In 1997, cancer research findings showed the release of iodine from these nuclear testing sites spiked the rates of thyroid cancer. Both Kodak and the government scientists knew cancer would become a common occurrence after the tests nearby, but neither had told the people. Today, the Oppenheimer movie is bringing up all sorts of moral debates about science and of course movie making by extension, as such movies tend to follow the popular narrative put forth by the winning government scientists who write the story. Later in his life, Oppenheimer regretted working on the atomic bomb and said that he felt like he had blood on his hands. This can be compared to his former Polish colleague, physicist Joseph Rotblat, who had worked on the British team on Manhattan Project. When he found out that the prime objective was in fact to subdue the Soviet Union beyond just Germany, he got disgusted and quit working on the project. And he became a proponent of atomic non-proliferation. The Manhattan Project and the atomic bombs became some of the most violent, destructive things to ever come out of science. When we watch movies about such powerful scientists who choose to work on these projects, knowing the harm it was then causing to people around them and the harm it would cause to their enemies, it would also be helpful to remember a quote from Rod Blatt's 1995 Nobel lecture where he said, science has become identified with death and destruction.